Hey there folks and welcome back. In our last lesson we introduced the notion of a parametric equation or a vector function. The idea there was that our function takes in a single variable which we call a parameter often denoted by t but it spits out an entire vector of outputs. The entries of this vector tell us how our coordinates are changing with respect to the parameter. As we vary that parameter, the tips of these vectors trace out some crazy curve living in two or three dimensional space. In this video, we're going to begin doing some calculus with these vector functions. And our first job is to introduce the notion of a derivative. Well, a derivative for a vector function is defined in much the same way that you've seen it defined in the past. We define the derivative at a point t naught to be the limit as h goes to zero of r of t naught plus h minus r of t naught divided by h. It's important to note here that this definition of the derivative actually involves vectors, right? These are vectors, their difference is a vector. When we divide by h, we're scaling that vector. So r prime of t naught is not actually a scalar like you've seen in the past. It's a vector. To understand what vector actually represents our derivative, let's think about what's going on in this definition. I plotted r of t naught here. It's a vector pointing to some point on our curve r of t naught plus h might be pointing to some nearby point, maybe this guy over here. When we take the difference of these vectors, we're actually talking about this vector here that points from r of t naught to r of t naught plus h. And when we divide by h, we scale that vector, right? We stretch it or compress it, but still it's pointing in the same direction. Now what happens when we take the limit as h goes to zero? Well, when we decrease h, r of t naught plus h is getting closer and closer to this vector, r of t naught. By taking the limit as h goes to zero, this purple vector, the quotient in our definition, is actually getting closer and closer to this vector, the vector that points in the direction of the tangent at the point r of t naught. So this is the big takeaway, folks. The derivative, r prime of t naught, is a vector, not a scalar it points in the direction of the tangent at r of t naught. Now we're often used to thinking of derivatives as rates of change, right? The derivative is supposed to tell us how sensitive our output is to tiny changes in our input. In this case, we have multiple outputs, right? But the idea is still the same. Our derivative r prime of t naught tells us how sensitive our functions are, x of t and y of t, to tiny changes in our parameter. Maybe then it won't be too surprising to learn that the components of this derivative vector actually turn out to be x prime of t naught and y prime of t naught. These are the rates of change of x and y with respect to t at this particular point in time. Now in practice, this is what we're going to use when we compute derivatives of vector functions. It's a lot nicer to work with than this gross limit definition. It also extends nicely to R3. We just have to add a third component where we take the derivative of z. Okay, here's a quick example. Consider this vector function r of t. To find its derivative r prime t, we're supposed to differentiate entry-wise. The derivative of my first entry is 2t. The derivative of my second entry using the chain rule is 2e to the 2t. And the derivative of my third entry is zero. We've just learned how to find a vector that points tangent to our curve at some point t equals t naught. Well, once we know this, it becomes really easy to write down the equation for the tangent line at this point. After all, r of t naught is a point on the line, and r prime of t naught is a direction vector. Notice that for both of these vectors, we've plugged in t equals t naught, so they no longer involve the parameter t. This means we're going to need a new parameter in the equation of our line. Let's say s. Our line is then given by, well, the point on the line, r of t naught, plus s times the direction vector, r prime of t naught. Here, s can be any real number. Let's check out a quick example. Suppose we're dealing with this vector function, r of t, and we want to know the equation of the tangent line at t naught equals zero. According to my equation, I'm going to need to know r of t naught and the derivative r prime of t naught. So starting with r of t naught, we have to plug in t naught equals zero to this vector here. That's going to give us the vector r of 0 equals 5, 1. That's a point on our tangent line, but we still need the direction vector. The direction vector is given by the derivative of r at t naught. So r prime of t naught is given by, well, I take the derivative of each component separately. That's going to give me 3, 2e to the 2t. And I have to plug in t naught equals 0. 
When we plug this in, we're going to get the vector 3, 2. Okay, we're ready to write down the equation of our line. According to our formula, the tangent line can be described by this expression here. Using our vectors 5, 1, and 3, 2, the equation of our line is 5, 1 plus s times 3, 2, where s can be any real number, right? We want to describe this entire line. And there you have it, folks, the vector equation of the tangent line. Suppose, though, we wanted to describe this in a different way, maybe in slope-intercept form. How do we find the slope of the tangent line? Turns out you can get it very quickly from the vector r prime. Let me show you how on the next slide. A related quantity that we might be interested in computing is the slope of this line. Remember, the slope of the tangent line is our regular derivative, dy over dx. It tells us how sensitive our y value is to tiny changes in x. Right now, we don't have that information. Our derivative, r prime of t naught, is just telling us how sensitive x and y are to changes in t, right? It gives us dx over dt and dy over dt. Fortunately, we can use these quantities to find dy over dx. Remember, if dy over dx is the slope of this tangent line, then we can think of it as rise over run, change in y over change in x. The change in y as we vary our parameter is given by this derivative, right? dy over dt. Likewise, the change in x as we vary our parameter is given by the derivative dx over dt. So our regular derivative of y with respect to x can be thought of as dy over dt divided by dx over dt. You can remember this if you think of cancellation of fractions. If these were fractions, you could cancel the dt and you would end up with this expression on the left. Let's wrap up this lesson with a quick example. Suppose we're dealing with that same vector function r of t from the last slide. I wonder, at t naught equals zero, what's the slope of our tangent line? Well, according to our formula, we can figure out the slope if we know dy by dt and dx by dt. Effectively, we need to know the entries of our derivative vector, r prime at t naught. In this case, t naught is zero, the same as before. And on the last slide, we actually figured out this derivative. We found that r prime of zero was the vector three, two, okay? Therefore, the slope of our tangent line is the change in y with respect to t, two, divided by the change in x with respect to t, three. We have a slope of two thirds.